Thanks a lot again, class, regular class. So we're talking about psychological. You can continue at the after the class, right? After the class, and talk with your group. So uh, we're talking about psychological tools and traps. So let's just review what we've talked about so far. So discuss with your partner about these ones. What is first of all the mythical fixed pie? So discuss with your partner. What's that problem? Mythical fixed pie problem. What is the medical fixed by problem that people have? Okay, so they automatically think they're in conflict with the other person, but they're not, right? So, for example, we think I have to get half of the pizza and you at least. But if we talk together, I can figure out that you want the chicken and I want the bread. So you can have the chicken and I can have the bread, right? The next problem, reactive devaluation. Discuss with your partner. What is reactive devaluation? Psychological issue. Reactive devaluation. <laughs> so, anybody? Can anybody tell me what's reactive devaluation? Yes. the proposal, right? Yes. People think differently. The same proposal, but somebody else suggests, a different person suggests, we think very differently. Okay? So we saw the example here where Americans were told, this suggestion is from the President of the US, and this suggestion is from the President of Russia. Okay? And they say, the same proposal, right? Yes. They don't agree it's from Russia. They agree it's from the US. Do you understand? Yes. <coughs> So, same proposal. People on the other side, they think they don't consider their proposal properly. Okay, next one is anchoring. Discuss with your partner what is anchoring. The most important one for negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Kim Sok Young, what is anchoring? <laughs> Very far, right? If the anchor is there, the ship can only move to here or back to here. 
around the anchor. Okay, so what does that mean for price? Hmm? How does that work in a negotiation? Price and negotiation instead of ship. What is the anchor in the negotiation usually? What's the anchor? What do people anchor about around in the negotiation? In the ship we have the anchor here. The ship is around the anchor, right? So the ship can only move to here or here, right? Because it's joined to the anchor. In the negotiation, where is the anchor? What is the anchor? First, first offer. First price or first offer is the anchor, okay? then usually the price doesn't go too far away from the first offer. So, you guys fell into that trap, right? In the class. Some random number. You anchored to some random number. Do you understand anchoring to a random number? Doctors also anchor to a random number. Okay, so we said we should put out, if we put out a high price for anchoring, we should be able to justify, have a reason. Okay? Uh, if we are not sure about the price, then we might allow the other side to say the first price. Okay? But uh, we have to remember the midpoint rule too. So uh, we should make a high aggressive first offer. And uh, we said that. We want somebody tries to make an anchor on us. How can we stop them from making the anchor? Why? Right? We have to show them that their first offer is not acceptable. Do you understand? So it's not really first offer. It's out of the question. Okay? Do you understand? So we make their first offer is not the first offer. Okay? I'm leaving the negotiation or I'm, it's out of the question completely. Okay? And then we can change it to our own metric. We, they have their reason for that price, but we try to change to our reason or metric for calculating the price. Do you understand metric? So we said that the metric, we gave this example here, they used a different metric for calculating the value of the company. Okay, here they use earnings this year to the price of the stock, but we are going to use the cash flow over 10 years to calculate the value of the company. So we change the metric. And then we can change the first offer to our first offer. Do you understand? So this is dealing with anchoring. So we'll see how you're going to use anchoring today in the negotiation, right? So uh, do you have any question about anchoring? Then we talked about overconfidence the last time. Yes. People can be overconfident in their own decision making. Okay. So we should look for disconfirming evidence, not confirming evidence, right? Because we're overconfident, we only look at the confirming evidence, right? So who's your favorite uh, lady, most beautiful lady in Korea? Who's the most beautiful woman in Korea? Guys. <laughs> hmm? Quickly. <coughs> Tell me just a beautiful woman in Korea. You never thought about that before? Okay, then handsome man? With girls, handsome man in Korea? Hmm? Said, my name? You're supposed to say me. Why didn't you say me? You could have said my name, you could have got A. Plus. You missed a chance. It's too late now. I'm in Korea. Yeah, I'm in Korea. I'm living in Korea. Okay. What about you guys? Pretty woman in Korea? Your wife. My wife? You never saw my wife. I never saw my wife. Before. <laughs> um, D minus. <laughs> Another one? Sorry. Hmm? Sorry. 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 She's the promotion model in the team, ST, ST. Okay, so she asks you to get married tomorrow. What are you going to say? <laughs> she wants to get married tomorrow.
tomorrow. What are you going to say? One being asked you to get married tomorrow. What are you going to say? Yes, sorry, yes. sorry, I love Christian. Huh? Sorry, I love Christian. Ah, yes, okay, very good. <laughs> well, you're going to say yes immediately. What about you guys? If she asks you to get married. Sorry, you're not my type. Ah, yes. Right? So you have to think, you're just going to think about confirming evidence, right? Oh, she's beautiful and she's rich and she's famous. I should get married. Yes. Overconfident, right? One bin, we'll be happy. If he has a problem, I can change him, right? But we need to look for disconfirming evidence, like uh, maybe that she doesn't like the car industry, right? Don't have the same interests or he doesn't like shopping, or he's very messy and you're very tidy, right? Or there's a lot, there could be a lot of disconfirming evidence why it couldn't, it, the relationship might not work out, right? So, people are, tend to be overconfident. So, we looked at the example, framing. Framing the question is important. Do you want to kill 200 people or save 400 people? Which do you prefer? Save 400. Save 400 people sounds better, right? So we looked at framing, how you, you give the question to the person in the positive or negative way. Okay. Uh, availability, we looked at uh, the information is, people go on the information which is easy for them to find or they, they're familiar with. Okay. So let's try, move on to the next one. So I have, imagine, I don't have here, but I have 10,000 won bill. Okay. Man won. I'm going to give it to the highest bidder. So we're going to have an auction. Do you understand auction? Yes. So you can bid, we can start at 500, or bid one, and go up. The highest bidder gets the man one. So if your highest bidder is Yuk Chun Wan, then I have to give them man one. Do you understand? Yes. You're bidding for man one. If you may bid Yuk Chun Wan, I'll give you man one. Okay? So that person, the only problem is the second highest bidder, if you're the second highest bidder, you have to pay me. Do you understand? Yes. So the second highest bidder bids O Chan Wan, then I pay you, you, you did Yuk Chan Wan and you did O Chan Wan, so I pay you Yuk Chan Wan and you pay me O Chan Wan. Okay? Or you give me Yuk Chan Wan and I give you Man Wan and you give me O Chan Wan. So the second highest bidder has to pay me if you're second. Okay? So then let's start the auction. So who will start with 500? 500 won. Okay, Chan Wan. So no big one. What is the limit? Upper limit. No upper limit. Each on one. Each on no big one. You can get man one. Each on no big one. Sam chun one. Sam chun? Nobody? Sam chun? Sam chun no big one. Sam chun no big? Sa chun one? Sa chun no big one? Sa chun no big one? Oh, oh chun one? O Chan Obe Wan? Yuk Chan Wan? Yuk Chan Obe Wan? Chil Chan Wan? Chil Chan Obe Wan? Pa Chan Wan? Pa Chan Wan? Pa Chan Obe Wan? Yuk Chan Wan? Yuk Chan Wan? Good turn one. Good turn over one. Man one. If you lose, you have to pay me. Good turn. You're a second highest bidder. You have to pay good turn one, right? You finish. Man one. Okay, then you're man one. Okay, you get man one, and you have to pay good turn over. Obey one. Hmm? Finish. Anybody man out on one? Also. Man out on one for man one? You're going to bet man out on one? Okay, man on one? You want to save her from paying the money? I paid. You're going to get the money? You make her pay? Anybody else? No? 
Finished? He said Manobe won't, yes? Anton won? You want to make him pay Manobe? Okay, anybody else? Anton won? I think I'm going to make a profit. Finish? You're not, are you going to bet any more? He said man turn one. If you bet if you man turn Obek, he has to pay. Huh? Why, why do you use the pick? Because it's the pick. Are you going to bid or not? Man turn Obek. Man Ibet turn Ichon. Man Ichon. Man Ichon. Man turn Obek. Ichon Obek. We already checked to our pocket. Huh? She, he's not money to give to you. Okay, Mano Chan. Mano Chan. Mano Chan. Mano Chan. Mano Mano Chan. Mano 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 and he pays me my church on, so I made it <laughs> Why? Why did you keep bidding? Even though it was more than man one. Why did you keep going? <laughs> because I want to beat him. You want to beat him, right? That's what we're going to talk about next. Escalation. Do you understand escalation? Yes. We can hear Obama saying these days, He's always talking about escalation between Turkey and Russia every day, right? He doesn't want any escalation between Vladimir Putin and the president of Turkey, right? Who do you think is more susceptible to escalation, men or women? Who do you think is more susceptible to escalation, men or women? Men. Men, why? Yes. Men are more competitive than women, right? That's why they play PC games. Did you know that's why you play PC games all day? You want to win, compete against the other men and win. But women like cooperation, right? With uh, other people. Do you like cooperation? In women's sports, at, they don't, at the end of the game, the winning is not the most important, right? They have fun and they meet each other. It's a more social, can be a social occasion, right? But for men, the winning is really important. If they lose against the other men, they feel bad, very bad, right? So especially escalation can be the problem for men. It's called competitive arousal. So you start to get competitive and excited because competing against the other man. Okay? Did you ever watch the Discovery Channel or Nature Channel? You can see the two deers fighting, right? Usually the male ones. Like, mm -hmm. So we have to control the animal instinct, instinct, right? So usually it happens in a case where there's a lot of pressure on time, and you're in the spotlight. Do you understand in the spotlight? I have some spotlight. I'm shining the light on you. So you guys were in the spotlight. All the class was watching you. So you don't want to lose to him, right? You don't want to lose in the end. Okay. When you're in this situation, we try to limit the role of someone who's especially intense. How do we do this? We try to manage the time better, so we don't make the time limit. I was pressurizing you guys with the time, right? But we don't, if we make less time limit, it can be less competitive. You have more time to think about it, okay? And try to spread responsibility, so one person is not in the spotlight. So if you and you and you are together making the decision, maybe they would tell you, calm down, right? Just calm down, just wait a second. Maybe it's not a good idea. Okay, to keep going. Uh, avoid becoming so competitive that your decisions do not make sense. And this is also the main point. Always try to look at the deal from the perspective of the, of the other side. Okay, so if you looked at this deal from the perspective of the other side, you would say that, uh, well, they're going, to, they're going to have to pay the money, so they're going to keep going higher and higher. Do you understand? If you only think from your own side, you think, oh, I need to make the next higher bid because I don't want to pay the money. Just thinking about you. But if you think about the other side, you figure out, oh, maybe they're thinking the same thing. They don't want to pay the money either, so they're going to keep going higher. So maybe it can never end. Okay? It can keep going up and up and up. So we have to think about the other side too. 
So, you were caught again. I'm catching you with every psychological one, right? I told you not to get caught the next time. Next question, but you guys got caught again in escalation, right? I don't know why you joined in. Those two guys, girls were doing escalation and keeping going, and then you came in. <laughs> right? And then you came in. Why? Why did you. Hmm? Could have left those two guys doing the escalation, right? So, anyway, uh, President Clinton was somebody who was very good at looking at the deal from the other side. Do you know President Clinton? Yes. Do you like President Clinton? Hmm? Yes, why? You never met him. He looks like a nice guy, smiling and very charismatic. People like President Clinton. Hmm? You know President Bill Clinton? He's a very charismatic person. You understand charismatic? Charismatic. But when he's also good at negotiating. So when he went to another country, let's say he visits Korea, he asks his helpers to tell him the four main issues between the two countries. And then on top of this, he asks them, how do these issues relate to the concerns of the other country? So he's asked his workers to find out from the point of view of the other country, not from the US. Right? Normally he might ask them, how does this issue relate to the US? What should the US be doing about this issue? But actually he asked his workers to find out, what does Korea think about this issue? And what does Korea want about this issue? Okay? Then, once he learned what Korea wants about the issue from the other side, then he reframed the US issues, changed the US issues to match the Korean one. Changed his side to match the other side. So we already talked about before in earlier in the negotiation, but it's important to understand the interest of the other side. Okay? Think, do you understand think from the mind of the other person? See from the eyes of the other person? So actually some people say that's the most important thing in negotiation. Number one tip for negotiation is to be able to see the deal from the side of the other person. Okay? So when we're doing the negotiation today, we'll see, can you think about not just from your side, but from the other side? We said when you're thinking about your target price and your stretch goal, you have to think about the BATNA of the other side, not just your BATNA, not my BATNA plus 10%. You have to think, what's the BATNA for the other side, right? And then work back. So we're thinking from the other person's idea. So here's another question. So. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt was the president of the US. He had three million pamphlets. Do you understand pamphlet? Yes. It's like an advertisement, flyer. Okay? Printed with a picture of him looking very good on pamphlet. But he then learns that a photographic studio took this picture and they hold the copyright to this picture of him. Okay? But the problem is he already printed all these pamphlets and he has no money left to print any more. The election is tomorrow. He needs to hand out the pamphlets now. So what should he do? He can't do illegal activity, hand out the pamphlet even though he doesn't have the copyright. He has no money to pay the copyright owner. Okay? So we are practicing now, thinking from the other side, right? Look at the deal from the other side. So talk, discuss with your partner. What do you think he should do? President Roosevelt. Do you understand the situation? If he has to pay the photography student studio, maybe he has to pay them three million dollars or something to use the copyright. Okay? But he doesn't have any money left. His photograph from the photography studio is going to be on the page. So what should he do now? Just throw away all the pamphlets. Right? What are you going to suggest to him? <coughs> Copyright means that they own the photo. Photograph, the studio took the picture. They made the picture very good. So they own the right to the photo. So it means that if you want to use the photo, you have to pay the money. But he didn't know that. He already printed the pamphlet, and they're ready to be delivered tomorrow. So he doesn't have time really to make a new one or to change it. Yeah. So, what, what should he do? No, no. He just found out that the photography studio has the copyright, and 
he has no money left. He spent all his money on his company. So he can't pay them any money for the copyright. So look at the deal from the other side. Try to look at the deal from the point of view of the photography studio. Right? Try to see, can we make some agreement? He didn't know, he just learned that. He didn't know that the photography studio had the copyright. Okay. Does anyone have any suggestion? What do you think you should do? Can anybody give a suggestion? Yes? Take the money from the US government fund and give it to the guy. <laughs> Collect all the tax and give it to the guy. <laughs> hmm? What money is he going to give him? Personal money? He doesn't have any money left. He, you mean after he gets his salary? First year? Gets his presidential salary? Not that high. Barack Obama earns less than most CEOs, right? He'll, he'll pay him back after that. Okay. Any other suggestion? This photo is the picture by this studio, so he advertised the uh, election, uh, advertised the, this studio to announce the other. Another. Yes, right answer. Okay, so he sent a cable to the photographer studio. He says, we're planning to distribute millions of pamphlets with the picture. It will be great publicity for the studio. Do you understand publicity? How much will you pay us to use your photo? Respond immediately. Right? So in the end, the photography studio paid them money to use the photo. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Right? So it's the same. We are thinking about the, not our BATNA, but the BATNA for the other side. If we start thinking about our BATNA here, we'll say, well, we have to pay $3 million. Maybe we can negotiate them down to $1 million. That would be a good deal for us. Right? But that's thinking from our point of view. Okay? If we think from the other side's point of view, they want to get the publicity, so maybe they'll have to pay us money. So they tried that with the pop stars in the Super Bowl, right? They told them, we're not paying, you have to pay me to perform at the Super Bowl. Did it work? Did it work? In the end, maybe the, the art didn't work well. But maybe they didn't have to pay the artist as much as they thought they would. Okay? So they're looking at the point from the other side of view. Okay, so any question about this one? Es escalation? You have to be careful about the escalation, right? In the, with, at the moment we can have, in, especially in dispute, escalation, right? Starts off with some very small thing, and then we start to get worse and worse. So like Russia and China could be escalate, and Turkey could be escalation. First, uh, Turkey shot down the Russian airplane and killed a Russian person, right? Then Russia makes the sanction against Turkey, economic sanction. Turkey makes the sanction against Russia. Then something happens, something happens, gets bigger and bigger, right? So we have to try and avoid that. This, By, yes? This situation is similar to chicken race. What's a chicken race? Uh, it's two cries going to race and it's the clip and stop is the cruise. Uh, who would do that kind of race? It doesn't make sense. Do you do that with your friends? Take your mother's car at 2 a.m. in the morning, and he takes his father's car at 2 a.m. Play chicken on the highway? No? I don't know that game. It doesn't sound like a very smart game to play. 
Somebody has to stop, right? But it's, anyway, it's a little bit like that, right? Escalation. In Ireland, some, it's quite dangerous. Some poor kids play with the cars on the road. They stand in front of the car. On, who, two of them stand in front of the car, and then whoever jumps out of the way first is chicken. It's a very dangerous thing. But it's like the animal thing, right? Like you two guys, if you watch the Discovery Channel, the two stags fight together, right? The woman is watching at the side, watching the stags fighting, right? Then they impress her, the winning stag gets the woman, right? So that's what you two guys were doing. They were just doing, and then you two guys came in. You want to impress the girls, right? Fighting, comp competing. Then the girls are all watching you two guys. Then I'm the winner, right? Then maybe <coughs> looks better for the girls, right? Yes. But not just for the girls, but for anybody, right? People are in the spotlight. Do you understand in the spotlight? Yes. So, for example, the President Putin has an image of hard man. Have you seen the photo of him? He's topless hunting? Yes. Yes? Doing all those things. He makes this image of the hard man. So if he's in the spotlight, he wants to keep his image of this hard man. So it could be an escalation situation. Do you understand? Yes. So if, if we can take the spotlight away from President Putin and more just on the Russian government or Russian country instead of just him, it can help. Okay? So we have those kind of things. Take the spotlight away from one person. Right? Make the time pressure less and look at the other side's, other side's point. So then let's move on to reciprocation. Okay, do you understand reciprocation? Reciprocation? Reciprocation means you do something for me and I'll do something for you. So you scratch my back and I'll scratch your back. Right? Do you understand? That's, uh, I didn't make that up, that's a very common saying in English. Right? So, it's one reason why the teachers don't accept gift from the students in Ireland. Right? Because maybe if some student gives me a nice gift, I feel like reciprocating. It means like, I feel like doing something nice for them, maybe increasing their grade. Do you understand? Yes. So, I agree and not to insult the student, I, maybe I accept if they try to give me some small gift, maybe I'd accept. I can't accept in Ireland. But I don't let any reciprocation. I try not to do any reciprocation, right? But it's a psychological problem. If somebody does something nice for us, we feel like reciprocating to them. Do you feel that way? Somebody does something nice for you? So discuss with your partner where you had some example of reciprocation in your life. Somebody did something nice for you, and you felt you had to do something nice for them. Did I ask you a question already? Yes, Kim Sayon. No. <laughs> okay. um, um, if uh, I have a lot of money, nicer towards him, he gives you a present, right? So, did you write that down? Uh, You're learning a lot in this class about the relationship. You guys should be experts by the end, right? Yeah. What was the name of the girl again? So young? Uh, yeah, maybe you can even make girlfriend with So young at the end of this course, after all of the tips. What do you think? Nice tip. Yes. Okay. So, 
we all understand this idea. So we have this in the in the negotiation, right? I do something, it's like concessions. I do something and you do something. Okay? Uh, then I give you something, you give me something back. Okay? So especially if we start high, it's a good tactic, right? We we can something maybe we weren't going to give at the start, and we can say, oh, I'll give you this, and I'll give you this. Do you understand? That I didn't plan to give them anyway. Or I was planning to give them anyway, these things, but I tell them that I'll give you this, and I'll give you this, then they feel like they have to re reciprocate, especially if there's some silence, right? How bad would you feel if I say something, give you something, and then I just sit here in silence? We're looking at each other, right? I just gave you something. Maybe you break down in the pressure and you say, okay, I'll give you the other thing too, right? So, <coughs> if it's, somebody mm -hmm. give to me the present, so mm -hmm. I, I pay back the present is the same size or the small size? Mm -hmm. Depends, just anyway you're going to give something back, right? So it's up to you. But this is makes humans different from animals, right? A little bit. People feel we need to give back when something gives to us. Then contrast principle is the next one. Uh, contrast is quite a useful principle. I use that with my wife. Okay? And, uh, my wife is complaining to me that she came home and I was playing some game on the computer, right? Why didn't you tidy the house? <laughs> Look at the dishes in the sink. I don't understand. How can you play the computer game? Dishes are in the sink. Right? <laughs> Men don't see dirty things like women. It doesn't affect them, right? So just I can use the contrast principle. First of all, my wife doesn't do that because we already spoke about nagging. So if my wife has a problem, she talks on the weekend in a nice voice. Okay? So she explains that in the nice voice. But let's say she did that at the start of the relationship. Then I use the contrast principle. I say, but look. Playing the computer game instead of washing the dishes is not that bad. Imagine that I was out drinking last night with my friend, right? And I tried to find some example, right? Like some guy in my football team, he went out drinking last Saturday night until 4 o'clock in the morning, okay? He went, he went to the Nare Bank, right? So, with all his friends. So, I didn't do that. Do you understand the contrast principle? Ah, uh, yes. So, I'm, it looks better because I contrast with something else, okay? Are you writing all this stuff down? Yes. <laughs> right? Do you think that can work on you? If I told you that, what would you say? First you're very angry because I was playing the game instead of washing the dishes. But then I tell you, actually, this other friend went out drinking until 4 o'clock in the morning, right? And then this other friend does all these bad things, right? So, how do you feel now? It's okay? It's not that important? Doesn't matter about the playing the computer game? Mm -hmm. Hmm? No? <laughs> Still angry, but not as angry as before? A little bit less angry? No. <laughs> More angry? What? Well, I just gave a good example of a guy who was out drinking very late. Which is better, that I go out drinking until 4 o'clock, come back at 4 o'clock and don't call you, or I play the computer game for 30 minutes? Does both things? Yes, okay, I understand. But the point is, by using the contrast principle, I make you feel a little bit less, and less like it's less serious, right? So when we present things like that in sequence, things can look differently than in isolation. Okay, we can contrast one thing against another thing, and it makes it look uh, different, okay? So do you have any question about the contrast, contrast principle? No? Okay. Real estate agents is an example of the contrast principle. Okay. Do you want to be a real estate agent? Who don't understand? No, no. So what they do is, first you come to my real estate agency, right? I tell you we're going to look at three apartments today. Okay. I have, I have one really bad apartment I haven't sold for two years, really bad condition and really expensive. Okay. I have another really bad one. I have one okay one that I have for six months and I really want to sell, but it's still expensive. And I have one really good one, 
that I can sell to anybody. <laughs> but I think you look a little bit innocent because you're quite young. So I, I'm going to try and sell you not one that I can sell to anybody that's cheap, the second one. The one that's okay but a little bit expensive, right? So what I'm going to do is take you to the worst one first. <laughs> Go to this apartment, then tell you a really expensive price. And you say, oh, that's terrible. Is that that expensive? And I say, yes. And you say, oh, look at the broken windows, right? <laughs> then I take you to the next one. More expensive, but still bad, right? And you say, oh, this is better. Yes, this is better than the other one, right? So I think we're getting places. I think maybe I could even sell you this one, right? But I'm not sure, so we go on to the next one, right? That's still expensive and just okay. But because you saw the first two, you said, yes, I'll take it. <laughs> Quick, sign the contract. And I tell you, oh, but somebody else is interested. Maybe you need to pay an extra 10%. Oh. And you say, okay, okay. Another 10%, no problem. <laughs> Quick, where's the contract? I want to sign my Here's the cash. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes. <laughs> and I still kept my best apartment that I can sell to him because he's an experienced person. Right? When he comes. Are you going to do that if you're working in the food on the sun? Why not? <laughs> Sounds like a good way, right? Do you understand contrast principle? Hmm? Okay, so you have to be careful then when you're renting. Did you ever rent any apartment by yourself? Yes? No? No? Okay. So, uh, <coughs> Let's take a break then for 10 minutes Just to break time.